Hello, this is Myra Elaine on the Buy In Space channel. Today, I am doing Adult Bible Studies Encounters in Prayer and Love, Spring 2024. It's May the 5th. And the reading, or the focal passage for today, is in John... John 14, and in John 14, it's where Philip asks if they can see God the Father, and Jesus is like, I am God the Father, <laughs> don't you know me, and uh, all these three years you spent with me, he, I don't think he quantifies it as three years, but uh, the background text is a chapter before, and a focal passage is about him explaining that he is the father and how in the world could you not know <laughs> but the readings for the week were in John which is part of the four gospels and I read a series on the four gospels every Wednesday night at or, uh, afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I also read from Psalms and I'm reading in Psalm 119 right now and uh, one of the readings was Psalm 119, 1 through 16, which is the first two sections of Psalm 119, the Alpha and the Bet portions. And then uh, another reading from Psalms, which I read probably two years ago. But there are two selections from Proverbs. So I selected Proverbs uh, 8, 32 to 36 to read this morning to supplement the adult Bible studies lesson. So here we are, Proverbs 8, starting in verse 32. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instructions and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily for at my gate, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Loves death. Wow, that's amazing. That's an amazing statement. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we have God as our Redeemer if we will just accept Him. Um, you can't get to heaven by works. God is a spirit and you have to be spiritual. And you have to believe and have faith to s believe that when there's no physical evidence you know I tend to love biblical archaeology and I, I love it when they find evidence of Jesus Christ and God and King David and uh, Jericho and Jerusalem are standing and all of those things that point to proof but in that chapter, in John 14, uh, Thomas doubts. <laughs> of course, Thomas doubts. He's doubting Thomas, but he doubts. And God had told Thomas before he ascended, Blessed are those who believe who have not seen. So it takes more faith to never have met Jesus and to accept them than it does for the disciples and other people that are around Jesus that saw him and heard him and knew or saw him crucified and saw the empty tomb. And when they did see him alive after his resurrection, saw the nails in his hands and saw the spear piercing of his side. How could you not believe after seeing that? Because there's proof in front of you. But some people, they can't 
except that salvation is truly by grace and God is merciful. And so they feel like they have to work their way to heaven. And they don't. But here's the catcher. If you are saved, you want to do works. You want to do good. And the Bible tells us if we follow the laws, we'll be blessed. If we take heed to his wisdom, we will be blessed. We'll have a more peaceful life. We'll have a closer walk with God, but it's not necessary for salvation. And I don't think it's our job as Christians to say, well, so-and-so, they're working so hard in church, they must not believe. They must not be Christian. The devil works overtime now, doesn't he? It's only God's decision. Only God knows whether that person is saved or not. And if you are Christian, then you want to do works. You know that you're not saved by those works, but you want to do those works. You want to read the scriptures. You want to do these things to be have a closer walk with God, to have a more peaceful life, and to glean answers for life directly from God through the scriptures and through the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean you're trying to work your way to heaven. That doesn't mean you're not saved. After being an atheist for 41 years, I became a Christian again. And I truly believed. I truly believe now. That was in 2020. But I had a preacher's wife and two young men in their 20s knock on my door, come in and tell me I wasn't saved. Now, <laughs> I was uh, intense, intensely in church from 5 to 15 before I became an atheist. I read the Bible four or five times. I was a teen missionary. Um, I started a mailbox, helped start a mailbox Bible club in my community, and I knew the Bible. I just lost my faith. And when I regained that faith, after all that time turning my back on God, I knew I was saved. But here, busybody Christians wanted to come and just put me down. Because the devil sent them because my testimony was too great for them to handle. They didn't want someone with such a tremendous testimony among them. I wasn't really wanting to be among them anyway. There are things I don't like about their church. I'm not judging them. They can have their church. But I had no intention of being part of their church. None. Because some churches today are part of political parties. They're not just churches. They're political machines as well. And I already knew that I did not belong in that church. So there was no reason for them to feel threatened. But I really couldn't tell them that either. <laughs> but so, you know, they came and knocked on my door to put me down as advocates for the devil himself. They were being that day. But my faith was stronger than them. I asked them to leave and not to come back. I saw them later when I went to a service with someone in my family that attends their church. And I just smiled and went on. And they made grumbling remarks, two pews behind me. But I went on and spent the time with my mother because that's what was important. And I don't let anybody put my faith down because my faith is that strong now. And people say things about me. But you know what? It's okay. Because God has this. He's got me. And I have the faith for all of that too. So please accept Jesus Christ in your life. And it won't matter. What other people say about you. It won't matter what other people do. God will have you. You will have a wonderful and blessed day.